For this video, I want to go over some commonly recommended plants for Wallstad method tanks that may not be the best option for your setup. Just to clarify, most of these plants can work as a secondary decorative plant, but in my opinion, they will struggle to be the primary plant that naturally purifies your tank water. So first up we have Amazon Frogbit and I chose to include this plant in this video because I used to use the generic term of floating plants when I'd recommend plants for Wallstad method tanks. More recently I have been trying to be more specific when recommending plants and using names such as Salvinia shown in this clip that I use in every single one of my aquariums. Most floating plants are excellent options for Wallstad method tanks but Amazon Frogbit has one major drawback. Now just to be clear, I'm not saying Amazon Frogbit is a bad plant and it's actually my second favourite floating plants for generic aquariums. The main problem with it in a Wallstad method tank is its root growth. This is one of my old photographs showing one week's worth of root growth on Amazon Frogbit in a very low nutrient tank. As you can see, the roots of the plant have grown at a rapid pace and in a Wallstad method tank that often has higher nutrient levels in the water column, you may see even faster growth on Amazon Frogbit. If these roots make it to the substrate in a Wallstad method tank, they may cause problems. Technically, you could take the time to slowly tease each of these roots out of the cap and layer of sand or gravel without pulling any topsoil into your water column, but in my opinion, it's too much time and effort. Some people may think that they can stay on top of maintenance and keep these Amazon Frogbit roots trimmed so they'll never touch their substrate, but if you forget, for one week it can easily get down there. A secondary issue with Amazon Frogbit and most other floating plants is light penetration. I use these floating plant rings in a lot of my aquarium so I can quickly and easily control where the floating plants sit on the surface of my water and let light get to the submerged plants that need it. I also remove fistfuls of Amazon Frogbit every single week and this can be a pain if the Amazon Frogbit roots end up tangled on your hardscape or amongst your other plants. In my opinion, it's just a far better option to go with Salvinia or Redroot Floaters or to some extent even Duckweed. Moving on and we get to Bacopa. Now to be clear, I have different types of Bacopa in a couple of my aquariums and it is a great looking plant and I really like it and I actually have it in my Wallstad Shrimp Tank. But, as I mentioned in my setup video for that tank that I link in the card and description, I only added it to that specifically Wallstad method tank to see how the plant would perform in a dirted setup. You can definitely use Bacopa as a secondary plant without issue, but it just grows far too slow to be a primary plant used for filtration. I probably trim my Bacopa Caroliniana once every three months or so and I'm not even sure that I've ever trimmed my Bacopa Maneri. This is the Tropica plant page for Bacopa Caroliniana and as you can see it is clearly labelled as a slow grown plant. But this is the screenshot from Boost Plants Wallstad Method Guide and these guys list as a fast grown plant adding to the confusion. In my experience and the experience of a couple of my good friends who also keep different types of Bacopa, this is not the case and Bacopa is definitely a very slow grown plant. I think that part of the problem is that there's different types of Bacopa in the hobby and people generally just use the term Bacopa rather than using the plant's full name. Another issue is that this is Tropica's plant page for Bacopa Mineri, sometimes called Bacopa Compact, and as you can see, they label it as having a high growth rate. People may see this and select it for use in their Wallstad method tank, but this is Bacopa Mineri in one of my aquariums. I wouldn't say it's ever had a fast growth rate and it's had a moderate growth rate at best and in all honesty that's being generous, but the issue is, once it gets to about this size, it just stops growing. I have two of these in this aquarium and both of them did the same thing. They grew until they were around 6 inches or 15 centimetres tall and then they just stopped growing and the Bacopa Mineri in one of my friend's tanks is even smaller. Now the plant will still take up nutrients out of the water column but to my knowledge plants have a far higher nutrient uptake when they are actually grown and making new cells rather than just maintaining existing cells. I don't want to ramble on forever about Bacopa as I actually really do like this plant and if you like it you can definitely use it as a secondary plant in Wallstad method tanks, it's just far too slow grown for it to be a primary filtration plant. Next up is Ludwigia and I only have direct experience with Ludwigia Mini Super Red but from what I can tell a large number of people have similar issues to me with other types of Ludwigia too. 
I actually used this as a stem plant in my Wallstad Method Betta fish tank and it actually worked quite well until around month 4 when it just started to melt. I have seen a lot of people say that this is usually due to lighting intensity issues and people using a low powered light on their Wallstad Method tank and in all honesty this could be the case. A lot of people in the hobby use very low output lights on their Wallstad Method tanks and I use a cheap USB very low output light on my Wallstad Shrimp Jar and the Rotala in here does very well but I would not expect any type of Ludwigia to grow in this setup. I've mentioned this before and one of my good friends literally uses a bedside reading lamp with a regular light bulb in it for his Wallstad tank and he uses Rotola Rotunda Folia as well and it grows completely fine but I wouldn't expect Ludwigia to grow in there. The thing is my Wallstad Better Fish tank ran on a Heiger 957 light that kicked out a moderate light intensity for a long period of time throughout the day and every other plant in there did well. Still, the plant did end up failing after about 4 months and it just started to melt. I've also seen some other people say that red plants fail due to a lack of iron in the aquarium. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think that this could be the case for a Wallstad method tank and here's a photograph from Diana Wallstad's book on soil being used for nutrients. Diana says that the soil used in her example tank can provide plants with a 330,000 month supply of iron. I recently debuilt my Wallstad Better tank and when I was removing the remaining Ludwigia it had plenty of root growth into the soil as well so I doubt it's a root penetration issue. I know that some people can make Ludwigia work in their Wallstad method tanks but I personally just have no more plans to try it because I think it's too temperamental. Next up is Java Fern and as much as I love this plant I think it grows far too slowly to serve as a primary natural water purifier for Wallstad method tanks. This screenshot is from Boost Plants Guide on Wallstad Method Aquariums and as you can see Java Fern is clearly listed as one of their low tech plants for Wallstad Method tanks. There's plenty of other blog posts out there that do this too but the problem is people skim articles that don't actually read them. I do this myself and I think we all do if I'm honest we'll skim through an article get to the bullet points and think that's the core information and we are good to go. But if you actually read the Boost Plant article, they specifically say that Java Fern is listed as an easy to grow plant that will work in Wallstad Method tanks. They also clearly say that it should be paired with fast grown stem plants and floating plants to do the heavy lifting when it comes to the natural water purification. I often see similar things to this on Reddit and social media too. People will list off the plants that they have in their own Wallstad method tanks without going into the jobs of each plant in their setup causing confusion for beginners. We can use my Wallstad cherry shrimp tank as an example because it contains Rotala rotundifolia, Bacopa caroliniana, Salvinia and Christmas moss. A more detailed explanation for this setup would be that it has Rotala rotundifolia as a natural water purifier. Bacopa caroliniana as a test just to see how that plant would do in dirted tanks, Salvinia as a natural water purifier and Christmas moss just for grazing areas for my shrimp. Java fern is a great plant and I currently have it in two of my own tanks and I'll happily use it in more tanks in the future but its growth rate is just too slow to be a primary filtration plant for Wallstad method tanks in my opinion. Next up is Busa Flandra and this one is similar to Java Fern in the sense that it's commonly listed for use but intended as a secondary decorative plant not a primary plant for natural water filtration. Busa Flandra is listed next to Java Fern in that same Boost Plant article as well but as I mentioned if you actually read the article they clearly say you should be using fast grown stem plants and floating plants for your natural filtration with those plants. I love Busa Flandra and I have it in a couple of tanks and I often recommend it over some of the smaller Anubius variants such as Anubius Petite. But this tank can serve as a good example of why I wouldn't expect Busa Flandra to work well as a primary filtration plant in a Wallstad tank. This tank is around 6 months old at the time of recording and it has various types of Busa Flandra in here and they have grown by around 1 inch in 6 months so it's very very slow grown. As I mentioned earlier, to my knowledge plants don't use much excess nutrients in the tank's water column if they are grown slowly and focusing on maintaining existing cells, they need to be creating new cells to use up a lot of energy. 
Now, Busa Flandra is a great plant and there's plenty of different options on the market that are different colours and have slightly different leaf shapes, but it just grows too slow to be a natural filtration plant for your tank. It should only be used for decorative purposes. Finally, we have Anubius, and I'll keep this short as it basically has the same issues as Java Fern and Busa Philandra. Anubius is a very beginner friendly plant that looks great in the right setup and there's a bunch of different types of Anubius on the market that have slightly different leaf shapes and things like that too. The issue is it grows slow, very slow, especially the smaller variants of Anubius that can be more popular for smaller tanks. You can definitely keep Anubius in a Wallstad method aquarium but it should only be used as a decorative plant rather than a natural purifier. Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end. I hope I've been able to help you avoid some potential problems with your Wallstad method tank. Thanks for watching and have a good day.